Okay, uh, this video, I want to deal with this idea because I've heard this a lot. You frame it in different ways using different language, but it's out there. This idea that black people are stopping, I'm sorry, that white people are somehow stopping black people from succeeding. First of all, a lot of us are succeeding. So we cannot be a part of your narrative. Secondly, the black people are, that are not succeeding, it is not because white people are preventing you from succeeding. Now, there may be some white people that are stifling your success, hindering your success, obstructing your success and your progress, but they're not stopping you. Because if you had the right mindset, you would be unstoppable. You might be delayed or deterred, but you would not be stopped. You would not be deterred. You would not quit. You would not give up. You would overcome the obstacle that is presented to you. If you can't go over it, you would go around it. If you can't go around it, you would go under it. Or maybe you would take a different route to the same destination, but you would not be stopped. And first of all, Second of all, the majority of white people, white society, does not have a vested interest in your failure. Yes, white supremacy is a thing and it is a reality. And everything, it is incorporated, it is deeply ingrained into our society. There are many black societies out there. America is not one of them. It's a predominantly white society. And white supremacy is deeply ingrained in many aspects of our society. That is a fact. But so what? Do you think that the system, let's say Jamaica, for example, you think that society is set up for white people to overcome and take over? the dominating black reign that exists in Jamaica or any other black nation, you think it's set up for that? Do you think that they are mindful of the fact that if certain measures were not put in place, it's possible that it could happen? You think that these black nations do not have systems in place to prevent that from happening so that they can maintain their black domination, their black rule, their black supremacy, their black reign. Of course they do. And quite frankly, they should, in my opinion. <laughs> None of this bothers me. I'm an American born in America predominantly white nation. White supremacy is the order of the day, the rule of the land. It is what it is. You don't have to like it, but don't use that as an excuse. And if you can't not navigate this, if you cannot navigate this path, which is clearly laid out for you and me and everybody else to where it's possible for you to succeed, the whole world is out there. I've got a passport. My, my United States passport is welcome just about any place in this world that I want to go. You do your visa on the plane, oftentimes. You don't have to apply for a visa and wait for months to get approved. You do it right there at the airport or you do it on the plane. You've got a U.S. passport. Most countries will welcome you with open, open arms. So my point is you can get a passport. You can leave America. You don't have to come back. I travel internationally all the time. Sometimes I'll get a one-way ticket. I've never had them uh, make a big deal about when I'm coming back or question me about how long it took me to come back. 
Now, of course, you know, when you come back into the United States, they ask questions, but it's never like they feel that they own you and that you shouldn't stay gone too long. There are a lot of expatriates all over the world. Many of them are black. They left America and they haven't been back yet. <laughs> and you can do the same. White people are not stopping you from succeeding. I'm sorry. I can play another clip where the same gentleman I spoke of earlier, Dr. Umar Johnson, was talking about how black people need don't need white people to do anything for us. We just need white people to stop doing something to us. But on that clip, he doesn't explain what exactly white people are doing to us. And since we're talking about business and opportunity, I would surmise that you're saying that somehow white people are starting stopping you from starting a business. They're stopping you from getting loans and financing. And he made the mistake of basically saying that we don't have our black McDonald's and he, he named different major corporations. Well, let me explain something to you, Dr. Umar Johnson or anyone else that thinks like that. McDonald's started as, I believe, a hot dog stand. Carl's Jr. franchise started as a hot dog stand. The busiest restaurant in all of Los Angeles is still to this day a hot dog stand. It's called Pink's, Pink's Hot, Wood, hot Dogs in Hollywood on La Brea Avenue. They get more customers on a daily, weekly basis than any restaurant in the entire city. And it's still a hot dog stand. It makes millions. The point I'm making is that major corporations oftentimes started in a garage. You know, companies like Walt Disney started in a garage. Microsoft started in a garage. Atari started in a garage. Apple Computers started in a garage. Hey, do you have a garage? Who's stopping you from cleaning out that junk that's in your garage, getting a few friends that have the wherewithal to do so or to do something productive and starting a business that could grow into an empire? like Facebook, Google, Microsoft, any of these big companies, who is truly stopping you? Are you saying that you get to a certain point and then you can't get funding? You can't get financing? Do you know anything about how it works in the business world? Have you ever established corporate credit? I have, I understand how it works. When does your race come into play? You know, black people, we just, we, there's, there's a few reality checks we need to give ourselves. I could make a collage of all of the black comedians joking about black people being irresponsible and having bad credit. And where do you get that from? I have A1 triple A credit. Many black people do that I know. Where do you get this idea? I'm, I'm tired of the lowest common denominator being used as a, an exemplary example of an entire race. You, you, you take the lowest common denominator. The fact that you have bad credit and now you're a comedian. You've got a voice. You've got a mic. You're influential. People listen to you. And you act as though it is a given that black people... A, are irresponsible, and B, have bad credit. And you think it's funny. I don't think it's funny if you come to me trying to get a loan. First of all, I'm not so ignorant as to believe that a black comedian or any other comedian is speaking truth. But if I was, could you blame me? If I wouldn't give you a loan because you're black and you're putting that nonsense out there? First of all, the only thing that is looked at is your three C's. They look at your character. They look at your capacity to pay. They look at your credit score. They look at these things. Where is the money going to come from? And when it comes to a business, you don't need to use your personal credit to start a business. You incorporate, you set up corporation LLC, and you establish business credit. And you